Hello and welcome to another chair blog. This week we're reviewing the, the finale of this series of Doctor Who episode called The Wedding of River Song. My tweet, I gave it three out of five. <gasps> it's shocking! Uh, usually uh, an episode of Doctor Who will probably get at least four because I love the show and usually it doesn't disappoint. So if something in Doctor, Doctor Who disappoints me, then it it's a pretty major disappointment. Um, this episode was the most underwhelming finale there has been since Doctor Who came back in 2005. Um, it was just overall as an episode, it was weak. It just didn't do much. It, 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 and the finale is meant to be like, you know, ah! big and crazy and big and emotional and, and, and interesting and, and have big implications and mean big things, you know? Um, the Ninth Doctor's death and regeneration in the first finale, uh, Rose's uh, um, departure from the show at the end of the second one, uh, Martha and the Master's departure at the end of the, well, the Master's return at the end of the third the third season finale, uh, the fourth season finale, everyone coming back, the return of Davros, the fight with the Daleks, uh, Donna leaving, and then the finale of the last season, <laughs> Doctor, Doctor resets the universe, and, you know, Rory dies again, and just, you know, lots of stuff happened, but in this one, what happened? Spoilers, there's going to be spoilers. Basically, this was an episode where it was just the Doctor got married, and that was it. There was some lovely stuff around it, you know. There was steampunk London with, with you know, uh, steam trains uh, on tracks going through the Gherkin in London. There was the pterodactyls in the pterodactyls in the sky. There was Winston Churchill as the Holy Roman Emperor. There was, you know, Area Fifty Two inside the pyramids. Uh, there was, you know, some. Uh, lovely stuff, but overall it just didn't do much. But however, one thing I have to make a really specific mention of that I loved. Earlier this year, Doctor Who lost one of its biggest, like, biggest people. And this was uh, a guy called Nicholas Courtney. Now, if you don't know Doctor Who that well, uh, or if you're just really young, you probably won't know this guy. Uh, you might not know that. You Sorry, you might not, probably. You might not. He's the Brigadier. The Brigadier and he died earlier this year, which is very sad and very disappointing for everyone, because, uh, of course, he's one of the people that would, you know, that was really great for Doctor Who. But the character, he was with more Doctors than any other companion, uh, and he became a really big part of the lore. And in tonight's episode, Do the Doctor got the phone call to tell him that in the, you know, in the universe, in the story, the Doctor, as the character, got the phone call to say the Brigadier has died. And that was a really... The look in his face it was just it was heartbreaking stuff so uh, that was wonderful that they had that little moment um so that was great so but it's things like that there was little the little moments throughout the episode that were really good but it just it just there wasn't enough and it didn't come together enough the particular thing that i'm gonna have to rant about is the fact that the cop out there was a cop out the doctor's death avoidance I mean, I always try and defend the show when people are like, oh, okay, there's always a cop out, there's always a hole in time and space, or the Doctor wins because he's the Doctor and he says stuff. And yes, Sunil, I, it, often that is kind of true, but it always has some kind of, you know, emotional weight to it or something. Because, like, one of the things I thought was that the flesh ganger clone thing that version of the Doctor might have been the one that got himself shot and saving the Doctor. At least that would have had some emotional weight because something would have sacrificed himself. What was it? It was the robot, the robot man thing from called the Test Selector from um, Let's Kill Hitler, uh, where the Doctor was inside a, a ro robot version of himself. So it was just a complete cop-out. It was it's a stupid thing. But, yes, so the implications of the show, though. Yes, that's it. Doctor Who, we're back, back to the original premise, way back. That, that's what we, we basically went to him to. Although this episode was crap, it's just basically just spent 40 minutes laying the groundwork for the new idea that, that you know, like I said, when the Doctor walks into a room, it's not the Doctor, it's Doctor Who. And that's what I want. You need that. Because back in the early days when the Doctor was mysterious and nobody knew anything about him, he was not only brilliant, but he was a little bit scary, and that was cool, that was great, and that's what we want. Well, that's what I want, anyway. Um, so, terrible epi- no, sorry, weak episode, terrible finale, but wonderful implications. So I'm excited. I think the future of Doctor Who could be good, but Moffat, I'm going to agree with the naysayers here.
Come with a bit of a letdown. Anyway. Hi!